Students, what is the main organ of digestion? Pancreas. Can you see that? It's the pancreas. The only food that's broken down in the stomach is protein. Most of our digestion is happening here. And that is why when someone has pancreatic cancer, they usually die from malnutrition because they cannot finalize digestion of all their main nutrients. And if that can't be finalized, it can't get out of the gut and into the blood. So the person can die from malnutrition. Proteolytic enzymes, Prote Proteolytic enzymes are enzymes that break down protein. So a proteolytic enzyme is pepsin. A proteolytic enzyme is trypsin. And chymotrypsin. In Psalm 104 verse 14, the Bible says, God gave herbs for the service of man. Did you know that there are foods that are proteolytic enzymes? So from the pineapple, the core of the pineapple, an extract of bromelain can be taken out. It's a proteolytic enzyme. And from the papaya or the pawpaw, papain can be extracted. And it is a proteolytic enzyme. So if someone has pancreatic problems, they should go on, and you can buy them from the health food shop, they're often called digestive enzymes, and they contain bromelain and papain, which are proteolytic enzymes, which can help in the final breakdown of the protein. Before we move on further, what if someone has low hydrochloric acid? How can they boost it? They can boost it by eating breakfast like a king, lunch like a queen, tea like a pauper, by not drinking water with their meals. But if they have the juice of a lemon in a little bit of hot water just before the meal, that can get the acid up. And a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper in a little bit of water just before the meal, That'll wake anything up. And did you know that cane pepper can heal a stomach ulcer? Black pepper can't, chili pepper can't, only cane pepper can. Because cane comes from the capsicum family, chili from the chili family. Do you remember what I said? Anything that goes into your gastrointestinal tract is not part of you or me until it gets broken down and taken into the blood. Pancreatic enzymes are particularly important for protein digestion. They break down complex proteins into simpler peptides and amino acids, which can then be absorbed into the bloodstream. This enzymatic action is vital for nutrient absorption and overall metabolic health. Without sufficient enzyme production, individuals may experience protein malabsorption, leading to numerous health problems. Lining the small intestine are villi, and the villi basically look like this. And up the middle of the villi is a lacteal. That's part of your lymphatic system. And then all through the villi is your blood capillary network. Now covering that villi, and we looked at this on Tuesday night, is a thick turf wall and it's made up of lactobacillus acidophilus bifidus bacterium. Makes a thick turf wall. And that thick turf wall plays a very important role in the final act of digestion. Did you know that when a baby's in utero, there's no, there's no gut flora? Their gut is what's called sterile. And when the baby's born, it's literally showered with the mother's microorganisms and colostrum, that thick, creamy substance that's in the milk in the first few days, it's rich in the gut flora. So what happens when a baby's born and when it has that colostrum? Did you know that a farmer 
if the mother dies in cow birth, in cow birth, is that what you call it? If the cow dies in childbirth, what the farmer does, and a farmer told me this, they squeeze that udder and get it into that little calf's mouth. It is so important that that baby calf get that colostrum. In fact, he said, if we can't do that, we may as well kill the calf. It will never, ever be strong. Let's take that to human standards. How important is that? You see, the role that it now plays, this gut flora, it's responsible for the final breakdown of our food. It's, res it's responsible for the absorption of the nutrients out of the gut and into the blood. It's responsible for protecting the blood against any harmful path pathogens that might be in the gut. It's responsible for the nourishment of the little cells that line the gastrointestinal tract. How important is that gut flora? So what would break it down? Antibiotics break it down. All your statin drugs break it down. Contraceptive pill breaks it down. Cortisones, prednisones break it down. Ibuprofen, regular use breaks it down. Now, when you've got gaps in your gut flora, you've now compromised the final breakdown of your food. You have now compromised the absorption of your nutrients through to your blood. You've lost your border protection. And your cells that line the gut have now lost their nourishment. How important is that gut flora? Hippocrates said, all disease begins in the gut, and he didn't know the fine details of what I've shown you tonight. So what happens if you've lost <laughs> your gut flora? It can return. How do you return it? And how do you know? In fact, some of the symptoms are diarrhea, some of the symptoms are constipation. It's called irritable bowel. And that's the connection with chronic fatigue syndrome. The person's not getting the nutrients out of their gut and into their blood, so no wonder they've got no energy. You see, God made it so that we've got strong acid in there to wipe out any harmful pathogens. But, oh, dear, the person's drinking with their meals. Oh, dear, the person's eating all day long. They're stressed out with their meals. So hydrochloric acid's low, so the microbes are getting through further down. It's all right. It's all right. We've got another system further down to protect. It's the gut flora. Oh, no. <laughs> They've lost their gut flora. Can you see the two processes to protect the blood have both gone down? And so harmful pathogens can get into that blood. Gut flora, or the diverse community of microorganisms residing in the gastrointestinal tract, plays a crucial role in maintaining digestive health. These microorganisms assist in the fermentation of undigested carbohydrates, synthesis of nutrients, and protection against pathogenic bacteria. A balanced gut flora contributes to effective digestion, nutrient absorption, and immune function. So how do we heal from irritable bowel syndrome? Number one... Stop. Stop the foods that irritate the lining of the gut. What are the foods that do that? Caffeine. Refined sugar. The hybridized wheat. We touched on the hybridized wheat last night and I'm going to explore it a bit more tomorrow in the acid alkaline lecture. Dairy. I acknowledge that Lula Bell in the paddock eating organic grass who gets milked and made a proper cultured yogurt out of it, that can be healing to the gut. But there aren't many Lula Bells in the paddock. <laughs> if you were to feed the milk in the supermarket to a newborn calf, the calf would die. So sorry, you, you can't even compare to what's in there. You're best keeping away from it. People say, what milk do you drink, Barbara? I say, I'm wind, I eat food. Milk is for babies. Hmm? 
We're the only creature that drinks milk past babyhood. Number one, stop all the things that can irritate that lining. Number two, take a probiotic. What's a probiotic? A lactobacillus acidophilus bifidus bacterium supplement. Do you know they are the two uh, permanent bacteria that live in your gut? All the others come from those two. Number three, do you remember Psalm 103 verse 14? God made herbs for the service of man. There are two herbs that coat, soothe and heal the lining of the gut and they're both a bit slimy because the lining of the gut is sliming. I think we all know aloe vera. And aloe vera has a growth stimulant. It stimulates rapid healing in the lining of the gut. The other herb, when you put water with it, it just goes a bit slippery. It's called slippery elm. And slippery elm coats, soothes and heals the lining of the gut. Is it that simple? It is. Slippery elm, a traditional herbal remedy, is known for its soothing properties on the gastrointestinal tract. It can help reduce inflammation and irritation in the gut lining, facilitating healing among those with digestive issues. Incorporating such herbal treatments into a balanced diet can support digestive health and help manage conditions like IBS more effectively. Let me give you a story of a lady that came to this lecture in New Zealand when I was there about 18 months ago. She said, I'm 70, I've had irritable bowel syndrome for 30 years. She's been on cortisones, anti-inflammatories. She said, the things that you have told me tonight, no one has ever told me. She said, no one ever told me that these foods were irritating my gut. She was very excited. That was Tuesday night. She went home, she immediately implemented everything she'd heard. She had coconut cream on her breakfast instead of cow's milk. She had a bit of honey on her breakfast instead of sugar. She stopped the wheat and bought some spelt sourdough bread. I think she had some millet for breakfast instead of her oat. Some can handle oats, some cannot. She started to have a dandelion instead of her coffee. She immediately implemented. She's 70, 30 years she's been struggling with this. Thursday night, what's that? Two days, two nights. Thursday night she came up to me and she said, I've stopped bleeding from the colon. She said, I have no more pain. She said, instead of going six times a day, she said, today I went three times. Wow, two days. Is she healed? No, but she's on the road. You're the doctor. What has her body just told her? Yes. Yeah. Those cells that line the gastrointestinal tract, they, they remit every three to five days. So the gut can respond very quickly. Where's my little two letter word? If you give it the right conditions. I have seen that happen again and again. How often did she take slippery elm? She was taking it before every meal and before she went to sleep at night. So it coated, soothed and healed the way down. If someone's going to the toilet 10 times a day, they can take slippery elm every half hour. You see, you play with it, you play with it. As the healing happens, you can ease back on it. For individuals suffering from irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, managing gut flora is particularly critical. Healing from IBS can involve eliminating irritants from the diet, such as gluten or high FODMAP foods, and nurturing beneficial gut flora through a diet rich in prebiotics and probiotics. This dual approach helps restore the microbial balance, alleviating symptoms and improving gut health. Most of your food is absorbed by the halfway down your small intestine. And then we come down to the ileocecal valve and that ileocecal valve here stops anything going back that way. Everything coming out of your small intestine into your large intestine is a little liquid. So one of the main functions of the large intestine is to take water out so stools are formed so you can pass with ease. 
So what happens if you've got the other problem, which means you go once a week or twice a week? Dr. Kellogg said three intakes of food a day should equal three evacuations a day. So if you eat 10 times a day, how many times should you go? Mm. So what can we do to make sure we are going regularly? Drink adequate water. If you're dehydrated, more water gets taken than, out than should be taken out. Eat plant foods. Plant foods sweep the colon. And by the way, is the appendix a mistake? Does God make mistakes? No. <laughs> well, what's the role of the appendix? It has two main roles. It's called the colon's oil can. It lubricates the contents to get it through easily and it also releases antibacterial fluids so that if what's coming out of here is toxic, how would it be toxic if a person's eating a high meat diet which putrefies and a lot of sugar and alcohol, what's coming out of here is pretty nasty. And so the appendix has to quickly release that antibacterial fluid to sort of calm it down so that it can get it out of your body without poisoning you. Whew. So make sure you eat a lot of plant foods to get that sweeping action through. Right down near the end, you see there's a little loop and there's a muscle there that's holding that little last part loop up. And we're very glad of that muscle. It's called puborectalis. And that muscle prevents us having accidents. But let me show you something about the puborectalis. Here is the throne, and here is the person sitting on the throne. When a person sits on the throne, puborectalis remains taunt. Now, things can still get through, but if a person sits on the throne, and in the front of the throne, they put a little stool, or they might buy a squatty potty from Bed Bath and Beyond, and they're mimicking the squatting position, the knees are up in the air. And when the knees are up in the air, mimicking the squatting position, then puborectalis relaxes. And when puborectalis relaxes, then the colon totally opens and the contents can be released with great ease. Do you know, in many countries today, squatting still happens. I was in Punjab, India, at the beginning of the year. And as I traveled down to New Delhi, I stayed in an apartment there before I flew out the next day. It was a beautiful apartment, all lined with marble. I went into my bathroom, all marble, and oh, there's a hole in the ground. <laughs> that was the toilet. In many countries, people still squat. And it has found to be, scientifically and medically, they prove it today, the best way to do the daily evacuation. If someone's not going and they're sitting and they decide to put some strain there, it puts a lot of strain on the anus and hemorrhoids can come out. And hemorrhoids are not very nice. So squatting can heal hemorrhoids, squatting can prevent hemorrhoids because squatting takes all the pressure off the anus. Probably two years ago, squatty potties were about $50. Well, they're becoming quite popular. And so I think you can get them for about even $20 now, but it's worthwhile investing on that. But it's also a good idea to practice this. Got that? Every day, <laughs> we should squat. And in many countries, that's a very natural position. It became a very natural position for me when I, I read a book called Active Birth by Janet Belaskis. And I practiced squatting all through my pregnancy. And when my baby was born, the whole baby flew out of me with one push, with the bag intact, they had to catch the baby. Wow, squatting does wonderful things. <laughs> because squatting opens that whole pelvic area. So it's very important to practice squatting. If you see, when, when you do squat, when you're coming up, all the pressure's put on your quads, your thighs. So if you can't do that, 
just go up and down like this every time you're washing the dishes or doing things and get, get those muscles strong again. Very important to strengthen that pelvic girdle so that we keep the muscles strong. And tomorrow night, I'm gonna be talking about exercise. And I'm gonna be show you how muscle knows no age. Whether you're nine or 90, your muscles can be strong. And what's really sad that many people today getting into their, believe it or not, 50s, 60s, 70s, are having prolapses purely because their muscles aren't strong enough. But if you get into the habit of squatting to go to the bathroom every day with that little stool in front and even getting into the habit of squatting in your daily exercise, you can strengthen that pelvic girdle so these things do not happen. So, Thank you for your attention as we went on the wonderful journey through our gastrointestinal tract to see what happens to the food we eat. That's it for today. In conclusion, maintaining a healthy digestive system is crucial for overall well-being, with the pancreas playing a central role in nutrient absorption through the action of proteolytic enzymes. The balance of gut flora is essential for effective digestion and protection against pathogens. Disruptions can lead to significant health issues. To support gut health, it is vital to adopt dietary modifications, avoid irritants, and incorporate probiotics and healing herbs. By fostering a balanced microbiome and making mindful lifestyle choices, individuals can enhance their digestive health and overall vitality. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more health insights every week. Your support helps us create content that matters. Also, we'd love to hear from you. What topics would you like us to cover next? Leave your suggestions in the comments below. And if you have any questions about today's discussion, feel free to ask. We're here to help. Until next time, stay healthy and take care of yourself.